Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, continuing the topic of vector arithmetic. Um, in, uh, in the previous lecture, I was talking about how the uh, addition of the vectors and multiplication of the vectors by a constant um, can be expressed in a tuple form. So let me just repeat very briefly. If, let's say, we have a vector which has a tuple representation, well, this is a three-dimensional vector. Actually, it's exactly the same as two-dimensional, etc. Uh, then multiplication by this vector by a constant can be expressed in the tuple representation as multiplication by each coordinate by the same by the same constant. That's one thing which we were discussing in the previous lecture. And the second one uh, about addition, if you have another vector in tuple representation, then addition of these two vectors has a tuple representation when you have uh, add corresponding coordinates to obtain uh, the coordinates of the result. Now, these two fundamental properties of multiplication of the vector by a constant and addition of two vectors um, are um, very important in uh, proving uh, of certain properties of the multiplication and addition. Now, the properties which we know from the numbers are commutative law, associative law, distributive law. Remember that commutative law is this one, when a and b are any numbers. Uh, the associ associative law is uh, uh, about additions and about multiplication. So in addition case, it's this one. You can put the parentheses any way you would like. So first you add A and B, and then add C to the result, or you add B and C and uh, add this to, to result of this to A. Same thing with multiplication. You can multiply it this way, or you can multiply it this way. And finally, there is a distributive law, which is to multiply uh, the number by a sum of two other numbers is the same as multiplication of this number by the first separately by the second, and then add, add, add them together. So these very nice properties of the multiplication and addition of the numbers can be very easily extended towards vectors. Because what is a vector? It's just in a tuple representation an ordered set of two, three, or maybe even more numbers, depending on the dimensionality of the vector. So if something is true for one number, why can't it be true for a group of two or three numbers, right? And yes, indeed, this is true. So this lecture is about uh, all these laws um, of uh, uh, associative law, commutative law, and distributive law as we know them. Um, we will expand them uh, towards the vectors using the tuple representation. So the group of numbers behaves exactly the same as single numbers, basically. That's what we would like to show. OK, so I presented this particular lecture uh, in, the, in, in the form of uh, problems, actually. And I'm, uh, I'm really asking you to do the, uh, all these problems yourself, because they're very, very easy. If you use the tuple representation to prove all these properties, it's really a piece of cake. So, um, I'll do it uh, as, as, as fast as I can because it's really a very, very simple thing. First, we'd like to prove that constant multiplied by vector can be commutative. Well, very easy. 
let's think about this. This is k multiplied by vector. Let's say v is v1, v2. I'm using two-dimensional case. Three-dimensional would be exactly the same as, and actually n-dimensional would, would be exactly the same. So k times v is equal to k v1, k v2. Right? Multiplication by vector is multiplication of these. Now, um, what is multiplication of constant by vector we were talking about? What is multiplication of vector by the constant? Well, it's actually from the definition of this follows that these are exactly the same. Um, why? Because um, if you remember multiplication by a constant, uh, let's talk about uh, constant equal to a, a natural number, like 4. What does it mean? You preserve the direction and you increase the length by 4 times, right? So multiplication of constant by vector should be defined actually exactly the same as multiplication of the vector by the constant because it has this physical sense. Multiplication means you will just uh, extend the length of the vector four times or whatever number of times, uh, preserving the direction. If k is negative, you remember we were just changing the direction by opposite and it should be defined exactly the same thing. So we can actually say that this is the result of the definition of the vector, its physical sense. And then, obviously, from the tuple representation, it's exactly the same because vk would be defined as v1, k, v2, k. And since numbers, multiplication of numbers is commutative, kv1 is the same as v1, k. kv2 is the same as v2, k, because these are just real numbers. Each one of them is a separate real number. So real numbers are commutative as far as the multiplication is concerned. So that's why uh, the commutative law of the multiplication of the vector by a real constant is obvious. Next. Next we will go to associative law. But this is not just a regular associative law. This is a combination of the multiplication of vector by two constants. So we can do it this way, right? Or we can do it this way. So first, we multiply two numbers by themselves, and then the result by a vector. Or we multiply one number by a vector, and then the result is a new vector, which is multiplied by, by the other number. Now, why are they equal to each other? For exactly the same reason. Um, so again, if v is v1, v2, then what is this? This is k, l, v1, k, l, v2. That's what it is. So the double, rep, double, double representation of this is this constant, k times l, multiplied by the first coordinate and by the second coordinate. Now, what is this? Well, these are two different uh, multiplications. First, l times v would be l times v would be l v1, l v2, right? Now, whenever we multiply k by this vector would be k times l times v1, k times l times v2. Now, is this the same as this? Yes, absolutely, because the multiplication is associated. Same as here. I should really put these parentheses to be more precise, right? Because we first multiply by L. But now KL times V1 is the same as K times L times V1, because the multiplication of the real numbers is associative, and each one of them is a real number. So as you see, the group of numbers behaves exactly the same as single number as far as the associativity is concerned or commutative. Commut commutative law. 
Um, and obviously we have defined all these operations on vectors exactly having in mind that these laws must be preserved. That's why it was designed this way. All right. So associative uh, multiplication of the vector by two numbers is proven. Next. Addition of two vectors is commutative. So V times W equals W times plus V. OK. Same thing, very obvious from the representation. If V is V1, V2, and W is W1, W2, then V plus W is V1 plus W1, V2 plus W2. Now, what is W plus V? Well, this is W1 plus V1, W2 plus V2. But these are equal to each other, right? Because the commutative of the commutative law of addition of real numbers. So if, if, if these two type of representations are the same, so vectors are the same, that's the proof of it. As you see, everything is very simple as soon as we switch to a type of representation because the corresponding law of, in this particular case, for instance, commutative law of addition between vectors is reduced to the commutative law of uh, addition of the real numbers, which represent each corresponding dimension. In this case, like two-dimensional, can be three-dimensional, any number of dimensions. Okay, next is associative law. Uh, let's say we have of addition. So let's say we have three vectors. So first we add these two, and in this case we add these two. So this is associative law of addition. Now, why? Are they, are they equal? All right, well, first let's just add these two. Now, this sum in tuple representation would be u1 plus v1, u2, plus v2. That's tuple representation of this vector. Plus w, which is this one, results would be u1 plus v1 plus w1, u2 plus v2 plus w2. That's this one. OK, now let's talk about these guys. Now these guys are, first we summarize these two, which will result in v1 plus w1, v2 plus w2. And now we have to add to this vector, vector u. And u is, I didn't write it down, but u is u1, u2, right? So uh, that would be, so we add u1, which is u1 plus v1 plus w1, and u2 plus v2 plus w2. As you see, we have exactly the same result, which proves the associative law of addition among vectors. Now let's talk about distributive law. Well, distributive law is when we mix together addition and uh, multiplication, right? So, uh, in this particular case, we have a kind of a mix uh, case because when we multiply, when we multiply, we multiply vector by a constant. So the question is, what are we distributing? We're distributing addition of vectors multiplied by a constant, which is. That's the distribution of addition towards multiplication. Or we distribute addition of the constant.
So what are we talking about? Well, the answer is both. All right? So let's talk about the first one. For, uh, the first one. Now, V plus W in the tuple representation would be V1 plus W1, V2 plus W2 in a two-dimensional case. And when we multiply it by k, what do we have? Well, we multiply each constant, uh, each, uh, each coordinate by this constant, right? So it would be k times this and k times this. Now, this is multiplication of real numbers and addition of real numbers. So the distributive law works. So I can uh, open up these parentheses and I will have this. That's the final result on the left. On the right, I will have first kv1, kv2. That's this vector, and I have to add kw1, kw2. And when we add uh, vectors, their coordinates are adding together. So it would be kv1 plus kw1. And the second coordinate would be kv2 plus kw2, which is exactly the same as this one. So that's the proof of the first line. Now let's talk about the second line. Well, when we multiply sum, first you multiply this sum by the first component, and then by the second component. Right? Which we can open up the parentheses because these are all numbers, so it's k v1 plus l v1, k v2 plus l v2. That's our left side of this line. Now, on the right side, well, let's multiply constant k by vector v1, and we will have k v1, k v2 in the tuple representation, and I have to add L V1 uh, plus, no, not plus, second coordinate, L V2. And when we add these two vectors in top of representation, their constants, uh, their, their uh, coordinates are correspondingly added together. So I will have this. That's the first coordinate. And this is the second coordinate. So that's my right side. And as you see, it's exactly the same as the left side. That concludes all these very, very simple properties of the vector arithmetic. So just don't forget that to add, to multiply whatever vectors is exactly as simply as you operate with numbers as long as you're using the tuple representation of the vectors. So it's very easy to add vectors, you just add coordinates. It's very easy to multiply vectors, you just multiply the coordinates by whatever the constant is. We're talking about multiplication by the constant. Um, and whatever the laws of uh, addition and multiplication of real numbers exist in, in, in arithmetic, exactly the same laws exist in vector arithmetic. Well, that concludes this lecture. I do suggest you to exercise again these uh, little theorems. They are all presented as notes to the lecture uh, on unisor.com. And, uh, well, make sure that you understand all these manipulations with vectors using the tuple representation, because that's actually the only representation people are dealing with when they are trying to approach um, uh, things expressed as vectors 
analytically, because analytically means basically using their, the tuple representation, not the graphics. Graphics are good for um, uh, some kind of illustration purposes. When you draw a vector, and then you add another vector, and then this is the sum of two vectors. It's all nice pictures, and it all explains quite well. But analytically, you have to approach it using the tuple representation with coordinates. And that actually implies the dimensionality of the vectors, two-dimensional vector, three-dimensional vectors, n-dimensional vectors, whatever. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.